Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to uh, talk about a question that came in a bunch of different times about different issues. But at its heart, it's the same question. Uh, and it has a, a very, very simple answer. It's just counterintuitive when, when you're first looking at it. Um, so we'll go, we'll go through that today. Um, and the question at its heart is, why is the Republican Party pursuing losing positions? <laughs> like, why are they taking a losing position on issues and just doubling down on it? Um, and the question came in in relationship to a whole bunch of different things. The most common was reproductive rights. So we'll just roll with that. But rest assured, if you sent in a message that is that that has that that core question, you know, why are Republicans doubling down on this horrible position that polls poorly and they've already suffered backlash from? This applies to you too. It applies to your question. Republicans are doubling down on a bunch of losing positions, but which Republicans? Is it McCarthy and McConnell? No, right? In fact, federal level Republicans, they've been super quiet. Even, even with the position the House is in, they're not pushing through anything. It's weird. It's because they know they're losing positions. They don't want to double down on them. So they're just kind of riding things out trying not to make too many waves, engaging in, in grievance stuff and culture war stuff, but not pursuing policy because they know they have losing policy. They don't want to drive negative voter turnout, which is where people show up not to vote for the Democratic candidate, but to vote against them. And if they pursue more restrictions on reproductive rights at the federal level, they will generate that. And they know it. That's how they wound up with unlikely voters in during the midterms. Um, so they're being really quiet. It's not all of the Republican Party that's doing this. It's the state level. And which states? It's either states that are genuinely red, like they, they are just red states, where people would kind of support this. Um, or they are states that are successfully gerrymandered, one of the two. That's where this is happening. That's where you see Republicans doubling down on losing positions, because in their district, it's not a losing position. It'll get them reelected. And they're just kind of like, well, I can secure my spot at the state level. Those federal reps, yeah, they can worry about themselves. And that's what's happening. The state-level Republican Party is putting the federal-level Republican Party in jeopardy by continuing to push this stuff. Um, and generally, they think they're safe. The state-level reps, they believe they're safe. I don't know that that's true, though. Um, you know, in the red areas, yeah, those that are legitimately red, sure. In the areas that are gerrymandered, not so much. Because when those districts get drawn up, they're drawn up based on normal voter turnout. If negative voter turnout is driven and a whole bunch of people show up just with the goal of ousting Republicans, particularly ousting them at the federal level because that's what draws most people in, they're not going to vote for the Republican at the state level. So they may actually end up paying for this themselves, even though right now they don't think they will. Um, but generally speaking, when you are looking at this, this weird situation that is developing, where polling is just very lopsided, it is, it is landslide territory, and the Republicans are still pursuing something that they know is a losing position, that's why. In their very narrow district or in their particular state, it's a winning position there. So they're pursuing it 
and putting the rest of the Republican Party in jeopardy. I think if they continue, they actually will end up driving so much negative voter turnout that you will see you will see districts that are successfully gerrymandered flip um, because it is when when those districts are drawn up they are based on normal voter turnout if 10 percent extra of the democratic party shows up it's not gerrymandered anymore <laughs> um, because they're normally designed to look somewhat competitive, look somewhat competitive. They're really not, but they're designed to look that way. If the Democratic Party has higher than expected turnout and the Republican Party doesn't because, well, they feel pretty safe, those unlikely voters, it's a good possibility that those gerrymandered districts get flipped, at least a few of them. Um, so that's why this is happening. It isn't a, it's not a party-wide thing. In fact, I'm sure those at the federal level are probably calling home to state reps and to the state party and being like, y'all have to stop. But they're not going to listen to them because they are in their own social media echo chamber. They're in that situation. The state reps are just listening to the people in their districts and the most vocal in their districts. And they just see a, a method that they perceive to be a surefire way to stay in office. And, you know, all of them want what every first term administration wants. Another term. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.